Thank you for agreeing to help out our church by making videos for our online worship services. In the next couple minutes, I'm going to walk you through some video techniques that will help you make the very best quality videos for us to share together. I'm going to show you the wrong way to do some things and the right way to do them, just so that you get a sense of some common mistakes that people make and ways that you can fix them. So come along with me and in the next few minutes, we'll learn some things together. A lot of the time when people are making videos with their cell phones, they're doing it for social media platforms like Snapchat and Instagram. And those are designed to have the camera held upright in portrait mode. And in those applications, there's absolutely nothing wrong with holding your phone like that. But if you're shooting video for a worship service, you wanna make sure that instead of portrait mode, that you shoot in landscape mode. And the reason for that, of course, is that when shown on a computer screen, it leaves these black bars off on the left and right and really wastes most of the screen space. So make sure that when you're shooting video that you always, always, always shoot in landscape mode, not portrait mode. Another common problem that we see a lot these days is what I affectionately call the up the nose shot. It's the one that you take when you're using your iPad and you've got it on a stand or you're, you're shooting from the webcam on your computer because it's really easy to have this shot that it's not really a very flattering angle. And so what I would recommend is rather than shooting from a low angle, that you make sure that your camera or that your computer is on a tripod or that you put it up on a stack of books or something so that people can look you straight in the eye as you're doing the reading. When you're shooting a video that's at the correct angle, you're able to look straight into the person's eyes just like you're having a conversation. And that's what we want to work on. But there's a problem with that if the camera is too close. Because while you can look at me right now and have a sense of connection, we run into problems with the subtitles. Once we start putting subtitles into the screen, like for a scripture reading or for hymn lyrics, suddenly it doesn't look so good. At the same time, you don't want to be too far away from the camera because then there's all this wasted space and you aren't able to see the reader's face so very well. So you need to find that happy medium. Usually, the best framing for a shot puts your eyes right about one third of the way down from the top of the screen. That way, your face is close enough in that people feel a connection, but it's also far enough to give a sense of the background while also leaving space at the bottom for the subtitles. So one of the things that's really important to do, just so that you're not too distracting, is to make sure that you put the camera on a tripod, or if you don't have a tripod, you can make a stack of books. But it can be really distracting if you have a human being holding the camera, because as hard as they try, there's still gonna be some wiggle. So make sure you've got that camera locked down. Okay, so now you're ready to start recording. So there's one more thing you need to think about before you even hit record, and that's the person who's going to be doing the video editing on the back end. They're going to need some space in the front end and the back end of the video. So when you're ready, reach out, hit record, and pause, and smile. Then begin speaking. Say what you have to say, sing your song, be wonderful on camera, and then stop and pause and smile and then reach out and turn off the recording. One of the other things to consider when you're making a video is where do you want to stage it? What is the backdrop that you want to provide for the congregation? You may want to choose somewhere inside your home, somewhere that gives a sense of you and your family and your personality. That's generally best. Here I am in my living room and I've got some of these bookcases behind me. Being a book person, that makes a lot of sense. It gives you a sense of who I am. 
but it's not so distracting that it draws you into trying to read the title on every spine. At least I hope not. There may be some better places I could shoot this video. When I turn the camera around, you get a somewhat different perspective. You still get bookcases. In my house, there's no getting away from bookcases. But you also get some of the music. You see some of the instruments that I play. Again, it draws you into the space. It helps you have a sense of who I am and a sense of where I am. It welcomes you into my home. It's good to have you here. Another thing to consider when you're making your video is lighting. I've turned the camera just a little bit. I'm still in my living room. But right now I've got this lovely stained glass behind me, but there's a problem. The sun is coming right in behind me. And so you can't really see the windows. You can't see the stained glass. And in fact, I'm cast into shadow by being backlit. So you wanna make sure that when you're shooting, the light is coming from the front or from the sides, not from behind. Of course, not every space is a good backdrop. Here I am in front of a blank wall in my house, and while you might think that it would be good, it's really not for a couple reasons. First off, the space itself is pretty boring. It's not inviting. It doesn't draw you into the scene. But it has a second problem. Here I am in front of a white wall, and while I'm wearing a black shirt and it gives good contrast, the subtitles get washed out of the edges. If you shoot your video outdoors, you may have some problems with lighting first. You may have the sun glaring down on your face, but you may have another problem like I do. My problem is this purple reflection that you get in my glasses because they have a blue blocker coating on them. And that's why when I'm shooting videos, I try and pay attention to the lighting. And if it's a problem, I have an old pair that I put on that don't have that technology. It cleans things up a bit. You may find that sound is also a problem. And if so, you might want to use a microphone. And you don't have to have a fancy microphone. You could use a pair of earbuds, something like these, that you just plug into one ear and let the built-in microphone do its job. It clears up the sound a bit. In addition to thinking about your setting, you should think about your wardrobe too. I have an advantage in that usually I'm wearing a black shirt, but if I change into a white shirt, and then put subtitles across the bottom of the screen, things get impossible to read. So think about what you're going to wear so that when we put subtitles in, everyone will be able to read them easily. So those are 10 things that you need to remember. First off, to keep the camera on its side so that you're shooting in landscape and not portrait. Secondly, making sure that the height is correct. Third, that the angle is good. Fourth, that the distance is right. And fifth, keeping everything rock solid. Then make sure you pay attention to the lighting and to the sound. Pay attention to the background and to what you're wearing. And finally, make sure that you pay attention to leaving some space in the front end and the back end. Remember, before you press record, pause and smile. Once you're done, pause and smile again. So thanks again. I hope this video helps make video making easier for you, and I wish you the best. Take care.